welcome to you. Just mentioning Combank uh, shares have come online. A bit of a tentative start as reaction, but uh, looking at the numbers, those net interest margins, the fact that they've been contained but haven't necessarily shrunk further, what's your overall view uh, on where they sit and where they've run thus far? Carson, so far, a pretty muted reaction from CBA shares after a quarterly trading update. As you mentioned, net interest margin was broadly in line with that which we saw in the second half of the last year. We did see a rise in trading income. That was a positive. We also saw uh, cost controls, uh, which were quite strong, so that's a positive as well. And we know that Commonwealth Bank is one of those banks with a very strong capital position. And we did see the T1 ratio actually increase to 10.2%, so once again, stronger. Now, in terms of the retail, sector retail banking we did see a reasonably good result it looks like Bank West is uh, accumulating customers quite strongly however a bit of a subdued update given the ones that we saw from ANZ as well as NAB where this retail business was really a highlight we have a look at business banking we know that conditions are still difficult there we have seen our funding pressures still there um, and if we have a look at uh, the wealth story well this one was a positive one we saw funds under administration up by six percent and funds under management up by 4%. So it does look like that recovery that we've seen in the markets really helping the wealth results there. But all up, we've heard from uh, three banks in the last couple of weeks. And if we have a look at some of the uh, insights to come out of those trading updates and full year results, I guess if we have a look at the retail space, we've seen a very positive environment as, be, as has been shown by NAB as well as ANZ. Business banking still remaining quite difficult. We know that credit growth is subdued. So it's really all about cost cutting at the moment and no doubt we're going to see more cost cutting in the 12 months ahead. One of the messages from, from Westpac, it, it, do things look like they're, they're kind of turning around in terms of just overall things getting better for the banks or they're still kind of stuck at the moment? I think the environment is still quite challenging and the way the banks seem to be dealing with this is through cost cutting measures. So we still have seen return on equity numbers remaining uh, quite stable with the exception of NAB which saw a 100 basis point fall there down to 14.2 percent. The return on equity for the big four banks still around 15 to 16 percent. And so what we have seen is in this environment of very uh, low credit growth we have seen a much bigger focus on cost cutting which has helped the result. It's good to see the retail bank uh, really a step up to the plate as well. We have seen a number of interest rate cuts now, in fact, 1.5% over the last 12 months. So I guess more deposits uh, have been coming through, but really in terms of margin pressure, we haven't really seen that coming through in this Commonwealth Bank quarterly trading update with the net interest margin broadly in line, unlike uh, the last couple of updates that we've seen where the banks have seen their net interest margin coming under pressure. So good to see it stabilising for the first quarter at least for Commonwealth Bank. And I think the result pretty much in line with expectations. Cash profit coming in at $1.85 billion, maybe slightly ahead of market expectations. But given that the banks have run pretty hard since June, I guess it's going to take an exceptional result as well as an outlook to see the banks rally today. Julie, a bit of breaking news. Uh, Dow Jones Newswires was reporting uh, that uh, Macquarie is going to take on the big four in the retail banking space with a tie with Yellow Brick Road. Uh, Yellow Brick Road's just gone into a trading halt. So what's your view on whether this is a game changer for the sector or it's just sort of on the periphery? Well, if we have a look at Macquarie Bank, it's really in a transitional period uh, between its past and its future. And at the moment, we are still seeing return on equity below the cost of capital. So I think it's around about 6.7% or 6.8% for Macquarie. So very anemic rates of growth. And really, we want to see a transition into higher performing areas. We know that a lot of its businesses are market related at the moment. We know that the trading business, uh, the equity capital markets businesses have been struggling. So the markets are looking for a transformation into a, a new business model that adapts to the current and the future environment. Um, so I guess it's looking at this retail banking space that has been an attractive area for the big four banks uh, over the last 12 months. Um, and I guess in terms of deposits coming through and easing some of uh, the funding pressures as well as the need to go overseas uh, for funding, um, it's helped the big four banks in that respect. But on the other hand, it's also increased uh, the cost because if we have a look at deposits, they tend to be more expensive than overseas funding. So it looks like Macquarie looking to increase their presence in this retail space, Yellow Brick Road. Um, I haven't had a look at the details. I guess we'll be crunching the numbers and having a look at some of the costs and how it might change the nature of Macquarie's business. I mean, what's your gut feel on whether the market would welcome that kind of change in strategy by Macquarie given I guess the earnings uncertainty that we've seen the last few years from the 
global financial crisis for the investment bank? I think this is a relatively small step for Macquarie. If we have a look at the majority of its revenues now, it's sourced offshore. And if we have a look at Yellow Brick, this is primarily a domestic focused business. I think it's in the area mainly of mortgages. And if we have a look at that mortgage area, it's been a very difficult time given the housing market over here in Australia and the very low rates of credit growth. So I guess it depends on the price it's managed to pick up this business. I would say that it probably managed to get it at a good time in the cycle where we're seeing a bit of a lull in the cycle and if we do see a pickup in this housing market it could be uh, quite a positive investment for Macquarie but I think it's a very small investment given Macquarie's very large business a lot of it being offshore and um, I'd guess that it wouldn't have a material impact in terms of earnings uh, for the next few years at least. Talk News Corp, uh, after hours trade on the street uh, spiking 6% uh, growing its EPS in the quarter two. This is a very strong result coming through from News Corp and this is despite, you know, we've seen a $67 million impairment charge due to the hacking scandal. We've also seen just over $150 million in impairments as well as restructuring costs related to its Australian newspaper businesses. And yet we have seen the earnings per share figure coming in above expectations. The market was expecting 37 US cents. It's actually come in at 43 US cents. We've seen revenue up by 2% for the quarter. And the shares have been rallying after hours as well. So we're expecting to see a good session here in Australia. We have a look at the result. It's really being driven by cable revenue and cable operating earnings at the moment. If we have a look at that cable division, it makes up about 57% of operating earnings. And we've seen some good growth numbers there. In fact, operating earnings up by a massive 23% during the quarter. And we've also seen revenue up by 16%. So some very strong numbers coming through in the division that makes up the majority um, of their operating earnings. If we have a look at what's really driven this, we've seen some good numbers coming through for the region sports network as well as the FX network and the Fox News network so this has been a key highlight for News Corp in what's been a very difficult 12 months so no doubt we're going to see a pretty good performance good to see them coming in above market expectations